Welcome back to Quantitative Analysis in Anthropology. I'm Professor Peregrine, and today we are on Topic 7, Lesson 1. We're going to be talking about Z-tests. Okay. I'm going to go back and talk about Z-scores a little bit. If you remember the Z-formula, it is the individual score minus the mean of the population over standard deviation. And you'll remember we've got standard deviations, we've got Z-scores are the same sort of basic thing. And from that we can determine the percentage of the population that's either above or below a given individual score, right? That's Z-scores. Okay, we're going to use that now as a form of null hypothesis significance testing, and here's how. We call these Z-tests, and what we do is use a table of Z-scores that will tell us the probability that a given case with its associated Z-score is either part of the population or not. The null hypothesis there, if you think about it, is the case is part of the population. The research hypothesis is the case is not part of the population. The value that we assign to that probability is what we call alpha, or the critical value. And that critical value, as we talked about last time, in social science research at least, is arbitrarily, but with, with reason in terms of trying to balance type 1 and type 2 errors, it's set at 0 0.05 or 5%. In science in general, there's usually three alpha values or critical values, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0.1. And uh, so we normally, though, in social science, use 0 0.05. Okay. If the probability, the p-value, is less than alpha, the critical value, then that suggests the case is not part of the population. In other words, if p is less than alpha, or if the probability, if we use an alpha of 0 0.05, is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater, we accept the null hypothesis. Z-test. This is a logic that I want you to understand. Again, this null hypothesis significance testing is one of the most difficult concepts to get in the class. So think about this and this idea that if the probability is less than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. A low value of P is when we reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Here's a table of Z-scores. And what this shows us is the amount of the population, a percentage of the population that is below that particular Z-score. So for negative Z-scores, it's this gray area. For positive z-scores, it's this gray area. As you go up, this is the amount of the population that is at or below that z-score. And it's important to recognize that because there are times where we might want to look at that and above, and what we do then is take whatever the z-score is and subtract it from 100 because this is going to be 100 percent. The, the z-score, as we see here, is really a percentage, and I'll talk about that. So we could say that this is 5 percent of the population, but th what that means is 95 percent of the population has a score high. Again, here, this would be 95 percent of the population, but we could say that 5 percent of the population have a higher score. I just want you to keep that in mind because later we're going to talk about one and two tailed tests and it's important in that context. But this is a z-score table. What you've got is the z-scores again and then these are critical values 
across the top and then these are what the z scores have to be to be at that critical value i'll give you an example of that all right so here's a population of happy me so all of these people whatever on score of happiness this might be and it's just we're making this up are these are their z scores and where they are in a histogram of a population okay this is just a simple histogram of a population of happy knees well, let's say we have an individual with a z-score of 0 0.06 and they would that means they would be somewhere probably in this column so we have an individual with a z-score of 0.6 what percentage of the population is at or below that score alternatively what percentage of the population is at or above that score that's what we use the z-table to look at so we have 0 0.06, right? These are critical values, and we're going to use 0 0.05. And so what we're going to do is look across at 0 0.06, down at 0 0.05, and what we see is that 74% or a z-score uh, uh, of 0.6 there's 74% of the population at that score or below it. Okay. That's the critical value at 0 0.05. Now let's think about that. What that means is that the probability that that individual falls within this range is less than 0 0.04. And we accept the null hypothesis. If we go back to that table, where does an individual z-score have to be till we reject the null hypothesis? Here. It has to be 1.5. Then we would say that that person is too far up here. They're at the 95th percentile, and we would say, well, they're in this upper 5%. And so we would not accept the null hypothesis based on that. So here we accept the null hypothesis. They fall within 74% range. That's within that 95% range we're looking for because we have a p-value and a critical value of 0 0.05 and so we accept that null hypothesis all right here we have a person with a z-score of minus 2.3 they're way down here on this population are they part of the happy me population they look kind of sad so maybe they're not. We'll go to the table of z-scores again. Now we're looking at this lower part, all right? So we're looking to see if they are above 5% of the population here. We look at the critical value, minus 2.3, go over to 0 0.05. Uh, critical value, we see that that person has 0 0.0094. Where would they need to be? to be above 5% level, well, they need to be someplace else. Anyway, P probability that they're within that 5% is less than 0 0.009. In fact, what that says is they're way, way out here. So we reject the null hypothesis. Say that they are not part of this population. Okay. Spend a minute, go back, look through this again, try and understand it because it's going to become very important for what we do next when we look at t-tests. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.
hope you had a chance to look through uh, that previous part again. Think about it in terms of null hypothesis significance testing, about it rejecting or accepting a null hypothesis, doing that based on the, um, <coughs> the, the percentage below or above an individual case in a population. And we're going to move on to adding a bit to that because what we're really asking last time was in the case of the sad me was about is this person sadder than the rest of the population, right? And really what we call that would be a one-tailed test. In the, the question of happy me, we were asking, is that person part of the population? And that would be what we call a two-tailed test. Let me show you the difference between those. In a one-tailed test, we're only looking at one side of the distribution. Is that individual less than? Are they at this side of a distribution? And we might ask, is unhappy me less happy than everybody else in the population, in the, the other population, and therefore are they not po part of that population because they're less happy than them? Saying that, we would allow people that are really, really happy to say that they're part of the population. We're only looking at the lower part. When we do that, we're looking at a full 5% if we're using a critical value alpha of 0.05. We're looking at a full 5% of the population. Here's where it gets a little weird. If we're looking at what's called a two-tailed test, we don't care only if they're less than or greater than on some measure than the rest of the population. We're looking at are they just different. Doesn't matter if they're less than or greater than, just are they different from the population. If we want to do that, then we have to look at both ends of the distribution, both tails, and if we're using a 0 0.05 critical level, then we only look at 2.5% on each side. And that changes then the p-value by which we accept or reject the null hypothesis. If we go back here, in a one-tailed test, we need a critical value that's less than 0 0.05, sorry, a critical value of 0 0.05, we need a p-value that's less than 0 0.05 to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis because we're asking whether the individual is within this 5% of the population, or this 5% if we're saying they're greater than the rest of the population on whatever this score is. When we're looking at a two-tailed test, we only look at two and a half percent of the population and to accept or reject the null hypothesis on a two-tailed test, we ask whether they are greater than or less than two and a half percent. So we're actually looking for a p-value less than 0 0.025. If we're doing a two-tailed test, we are not looking for a p-value less than 0 0.05. We're looking for a p-value less than 0 0.025 because we're only looking at two and a half percent of the population on either side. It could either be greater or less than. It's a concept that's a little hard to get at, but think about it. Maybe go back and review this again. Think about it. That's an important concept because we can do something that is cheating but is done all the time, which is to change our, our test from a uh, one tail to two tail. We can have a question and just ask, is an individual part of a population or not, and we get a p-value of 0 0.03. Oh, darn. It's not in here. We don't reject the null hypothesis. 
uh, we accept the null hypothesis and whatever my research idea is, is not supported. But, but we can go back to a one-tail testing. Ah, 0 0.03, well now, it's here and I can reject the null hypothesis. And people do that. But we'll rephrase the question uh, into, well, is this individual not, not, is the individual different from the population, but are they lower than the rest of the population? They'll change the question and get the ability from doing that to reject the null hypothesis. Again, think about this concept. And it's really good to think about it in terms of making an argument. That process is loosely called p-hacking. You can also p-hack by saying ahead of time that the critical value is 0 0.01 and then you get a p-value of like 0 0.015 and you say I'm going to p-hack, I'm going to raise it up to 0 0.05. So those things happen in research. They're hard to find often because you don't get the original question necessarily. Um, but there are ways of telling. And normally it is if a question makes more sense as a one-tailed question. This person is less than the population on this score or greater than the population on the score rather than is this person different? Did they, are, are they not in the population? Because that's the difference between a one-tail and a two-tail test. All right. Given all that, I want to look ahead a little bit to what is going to be the absolutely most complicated and potentially most difficult topic that you're going to face in this course. And here's where we begin. We have just been looking at z-scores, where we have an individual compared with a population or a sample. This can be a sample. We have an individual compared to a population. Normally, though, we don't work with individuals. What we normally work with is a sample. And we normally don't work with, with populations. We normally work with samples. When we get a situation where we are working with an individual and a sample, or a sample and a population, that's apples and oranges. We, we don't want to, and it's not statistically appropriate, <clears throat> to compare a sample with a population or an individual with a sample, because you've got different pieces there. What we need to do in that case is use something called a t-test. And we're going to move on to t-tests next. T-tests can be very confusing because we're going to work with some new concepts and new terms. So what I would suggest you do is before watching the next lesson, you read about t-tests, you get some idea of what they are. You may want to go back through the z-test uh, concepts, the portion of your text, and this lesson so that you understand this idea of testing an individual against a population to ask, are, do they score significantly less than or greater than, or are they different from the rest of the population to accept or reject a null hypothesis? Because that's the basis of t-tests, but t-tests take on a different mathematics and somewhat of a different logic. Okay, so that's what we will be doing next, and I'll see you next time.